Hello everyone, I'm Ryan from Infinite MTG, and today we're going to be drafting the Infinite Cube. The Infinite Cube is a cube that I've designed. Um, it's designed to incorporate all the infinite combos that I've created on my Instagram page. Now, of course, I don't have all of them because I can't afford a time vault, it's an expensive card. But it's got a lot of my favourites, for example, Deadeye Navigator and Peregrine Drake, as well as the two Wisp Weaver Angels combo, or Wisp Weaver Angel in any clone. Now this is a 360 card cube, which means it can support exactly 8 people or less. So, how about we just get straight into it, see what you guys think. Sealed would mean like a pre-release, and draft is what we're going to do right now, so hopefully we get some good packs. Okay, so these are two quite good lands, they can fix you to three colours. Morsel Horde is part of the combo, so is Lightning Greaves. I think Lightning Greaves is a good turn one pack one pick because it's colourless and it goes in a lot of decks. If you've got a big beta, it goes into that deck as well as the combo deck. What else do we have here? Works just this thing. Quick Silver Dagger is one of my favourite cards in the cube. Tap, draw a card. One damage sometimes can be relevant as well. Identity Thief's part of a combo. Um, Travel Migration is great. Cast down. Fallen Angel to sack out that. I'm not sure that would be relevant. Control Magic is probably the pick. Control Magic gains you a creature. Mercurial Pretender is nice. Nice cloning effect. What else do we have here? Probably a clone effect is nice at the moment. Ors of Signet. There seems to be quite a nice sack out there. Sack for value. Got aristocrats deck going around. Named after Vampire Aristocrat. Not sure we're going to be playing that. Um, Slave of Bolas is great because we steal a creature and then it dies. So we get the last laugh. Whispy for Angel and Deadeye Navigator, two cards that go infinite. However, we already have Mercurial Pretender, which means if we take Whispy for Angel, we've got an infinite combo. Now this effectively creates infinite enter the battlefield triggers. Now all we need is a way to abuse that and create whenever a creature enters the battlefield, or whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield, because Whispy for Angel exiles the, the shapeshifter. The shapeshifter comes back in as a copy of Whispy for Angel, exiling the angel. So we take Outpost Siege, which says whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield, Outpost Siege deals 1 damage, and we just win the game. That's a nice little combo we already have. Okay, I'm happy with that. Master Trinketeer seems good. Uh, creating servos isn't bad. It's not great. Um, we are playing red and black, so a Carnarium wouldn't be the worst thing. Neither would be a Torment of Souls. I think I might take the Torment of Souls, reanimating something from our graveyard and giving our creatures plus two plus zero and and haste. Even better. Okay. Morsel Horde is part of the Departure combo, but we're not doing that. We've already passed Departure. By Force destroys the artifacts, that's nice. We can destroy as many as we need at the current time. So we're going red, blue, black, white so far. Those are all the colours. Have. We need to go blue, black, red, and no, sorry, white, blue, black, and red are two optional colours. Dark Sun Mutation is great removal. Sinking Phoenix, the other part, the Partridge combo. Kind of wishing I drafted that now, but hey ho. Inferno Titan is great. Help the Charge Druid. Cast Down and Never, two of the best removal spells. I prefer Never. Pay free to destroy a creature or a planeswalker. Paint a bit can be relevant sometimes, not all the time. Ors of the Sill is nice. We want to try and get our fixing. Walk the Plank, destroy a non merfolk creature, and Sunken Hollow, and then Sarah Angel. We've got quite a few fixing, quite a lot of land, so that's quite good. Not loads, but we've got enough. We can get some more, hopefully. Pilgrim Side is great. Helm of the Host goes infinite with Godo. Godo is in red, and we are drafting a bit of red, so I might take the Helm of the Host. Maybe a Pilgrim's Eye for fixing. Sunbond goes infinite with um, Spike Feeder, so if that comes around, we can draft that, get a combo there. It's just, a, do I want to be greedy? Or do I want to fix? I think Helm of the Host is good with other cards as well. Oh, there we go, Godo. It was worth being greedy. So if you don't know, Godo and Helm of the Host is an infinite combat, it's an infinite combat step. The way it works is we equip Helm of the Host to Godo. Now Godo says, whenever Godo attacks for the first time each turn, untap it and all samurai you control. After this phase, you get an additional combat phase. Helm of the Host says, at the beginning of the combat of combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy of equipped creature. Except the token isn't legendary if equipped creature is legendary and the token gains haste. So 
So at the beginning of combat, we create a token to copy of Godo. We swing in with Godo, and doesn't matter if we deal damage or not, because when he attacks, the first time each turn, we untap it and get an additional combat phase. We move a new combat phase, we get another Godo token. So this is an infinite damage com is an infinite uh, combat step combo. I'm quite a fan of it. Hellkite charge is nice. It would require us to get another card. This Ovaya is nice. Do we have a lot of tokens? Not really. So the main colours we have are white, red, and blue. With black being kind of the sub colour we've got quite a lot of. White, red, and blue are the ones I want to focus on though. Maybe a Hellkite Charger. We could take the Hellkite Charger. It's not bad in its own. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's take the Hellkite Charger. White, blue, Reflector Mage is a great card. Bouncing a creature to its owner's hand, and then they can't cast it next turn. I'm a fan of that. Mm -hmm. Scaling Cataract is good. We're going a lot of colours, so that can help fix us. So that it does wait till turn 5 before it does its job. Yeah, Cascading Cataracts, why not? Curiosity's nice if we get Niv Mizzet, not that we're likely to. Or it works with Quicksilver Dagger, that dagger, which means it'll tap makes draw two cards instead of one. Not an infinite combo, but a combo still, so I think I'll take Curiosity, I'm a massive fan of it. Omen Speaker, Opt, and Deep Freeze are three cards I like. And again, Crumbling Necropolis. Or the impact tremors, which will work with this combo. I think we're gonna get the impact tremors. What else do we have? Hmm. Dragon fodder's nice. We don't have a lot. Of, it triggers impact tremors twice, so yeah, sure. Dragon fodder's nice. Um, Moon silver spear. If we already have the helm of the host and we cast go, do we want to search for something? Um, or do we? Prophetic prism. It's good. It fixes our mana. And it draws a card so it replaces itself. Um, Woodland Cemetery, I think Mystic Monastery is better. So both of them do the same job in this event, fixing our mana. We're not playing green. Green seems to be quite open. We're not going to change this late. We're playing white, red, blue, and a bit of black. Mortify is great, great removal. Ultimate price, yeah. So he's artistry. I think True Heart Duelist and then the Reservoir. Yeah, okay. So, what's this? Is this pack two or three? Okay, so this is pack three, the final pack. Doubt we'll be able to get a third infinite combo, but it's possible, it's possible. I'm not saying it's impossible. So, what do we have? Mm. It's too late for Madoma, I'm pretty sure we've already seen two identity thieves go past us. Mystic Snake's great. Um, Teach Fight could remove the spell, but we're not playing green. It's the one card we're not even considering playing. Blue red or red white? Which what fixing do we have? We've already got red, white, blue. Is that the only fixing we have? Black, white, black. And okay, so we're pretty even on the two fixing. Which one do I want more? Do we have more blue or more white? We have more blue. No, we have more white. Yes, more white. Let's grab this. Okay. Duke of a Great. Ultra of the Brood. Another ETB trigger instant. Great. Mill our opponents out. Oh, there's another Whispery of Angel, making the combo even easier. Two Whispery of Angels works as well. Countering spells. Um, Stormcrow. I should take this. It's the most powerful card in all the magic. Um, what else do we have? I like Insidious Will. It's probably one of my favourite counter spells in the game, to be honest. Hmm. Yeah, let's go for it. And what we really, really want is fixing right now. We want to get as much mana fixing as possible because we're running a lot of colours. Abundance is great, but we're not playing green. It's one card we're not playing. Uh, Devotion, no. Ornithopter, it's zero cost. It's an artifact. It does go in a combo, but I doubt we're going to be able to pull it. Do we have any legendaries worth tutoring? Helm of the Host, definitely. Or Godo, even better. Yeah, Farley's Lancers is definitely worth it. Um, Rakdos Signet. Um, what else do we have? Is it Boiler Works? 
We've got the, I don't think we have a lot of instant sorcery. We've got a few. We've got a few, but not a lot. Spy and Malice is a great card. Marker Vitalist is good. Fixing. Oh no, not playing green. Apologies about that. Even Surveyor. Bobs of Karanos. Kari's Abbot, please. And there we go, that's the draft. Now, first up, let's put the combos down there so you can see them. Whisperweaver Angel. Where's the other one? Whisperweaver Angel. Where's that other? Imperial Pretender. I think that was it. Might be another one. I doubt it, though. So, I'll explain the two combos to you now. So, Whisperweaver Angel and Whisperweaver Angel. Whisperweaver Angel number one enters the battlefield and exiles Whisperweaver Angel number two. Whisperweaver Angel number two enters the battlefield and exiles Whisperweaver Angel number one. Now, if we've got a card like Altar of the Brood out, Altar of the Brood says, whenever another permanent enters under your control, each opponent puts the top card of the library into their graveyard. So we get infinite Whisperweaver triggers, infinite Altar triggers, infinite mill on our opponent. Next turn, they lose the game during their draw step. The next combo, so the next other card is Impact Tremors, which says whenever a creature enters under your control, it deals one damage to each opponent. So they infinitely enter the battlefield as well as leaving the battlefield, which deals infinite damage to our opponents. And an Outpost Siege as well. Whenever a creature leaves the battlefield, it deals one damage to target creature or player. And when the Wisp Weaver Angel enters, it flickers the other one, exiling it for it to return, which will trigger Outpost Siege as well. The Megodo Helm of the Host I already explained. Um, now fixing how many lands? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 lands that tap for multicolours of mana. Unfortunately, we didn't get any of the searching ones, like the Fopter that searches for a land, or the Skittering Surveyor that searches for a land. We'd get Farley's Lancers, which shoots us for Gogo, -Go, Godo even. We might not even need to run blue anymore. Because we've got the two whites there, which does the job for us, the two wispy angels. However, it's more consistent if we have all three of them. I'm considering cutting black, but do we have enough removal without it? Um, by forces and include Aberflux, maybe, I'm not really sure. Yes, Quicksilver Dag is definitely going in there. Lightning Greaves. That way that when the Godo enters, we can equip Greaves and swing for infinite combat steps this turn. Prophetic Fism, stop going there because we're going so many colours. I think we have to cut black. We're not playing green. Curiosity is going in there. Nice card. Dark Soul Mutation, removal. Dragon Fodder, True Heart Duelist, and Rakdos Signet. I know we're cutting black, but it still taps for red, which is good. Reflect Mage is great. Let's roll out those two. Control Magic is amazing. Insidious Will. Counter Target Non Creature Souls fine. Uh, it's a bit expensive for it. Spectral Reserves is pretty good. We get two ETB triggers, which is our deck cares about a lot more than a lot of decks. That bounces a creature. Now, mm, not sure if this is a perfect list. It probably could be perfected a little bit. But we've got 23 cards and then 17 lands. So those are the non basics. Oh, one foot. Okay, so we got one, two, three, four non basics there. And then we need another 13 lands. So let's count the mana symbols. So seven blue, eight white, and five, six red. Okay. So the one we need the least of is red. No, I mean the most of is white. So planes, 13 lands, that's what? Four, five planes, four islands, and four mountains. Except land. There we go, 40 cards in total. Um, I'm not very happy with this list. It's It works. It's not the best draft I've had. Although this only counts 8 creatures, Dragon Fodder and that, I count them as creature spells, that's more like 10 creature spells. We probably do need another creature, is there any other that we can add? Sarah Angel, what would we take out? Maybe Bi-Force. 
decide any of your opponents are playing artifacts, definitely. Yeah, okay. So, mm, I want the fork to back in, really. That plays out big for our combo pieces. Okay, you know what? I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to leave you guys now. Um, please comment down below what you think of the cube. Make sure to check out the link in the description to go cube it yourself. See what you think. And then comment down below what combos you managed to pull off. Make sure to check out my Instagram, infinite underscore mtg. Make sure to check out my Facebook page, infinite space mtg. And make sure to like, subscribe. And I'll see you guys next video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.